This video was made possible with the help of Game Toppers. Upgrade your gaming experience with a Game Topper. Hello chaps and chapettes. In this video, I'm not going to be talking about any of these wonderful games here, but I'm actually going to be talking about a book about wonderful games. This is the Board Game Book Volume 1. Evil Laugh, insert here. I don't know if I'm qualified to review a literary, a literal, a, 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 a works of this type with words in it because myself, I'm not a very wordy person. I very, I have a very limited like, vocabulary, and when I open my mouth, the words in my brain get scrambled up before they. You know, it must be around the nose area. They, they, the, break, the words and sentences are there and they're really intelligent and then they pass the nose and the nose goes, ah, mixes them up and then they come out my mouth as garbage. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do my best and I'll try my best to put some nice images of the interior of the book up on the screen so you're not looking at me constantly for the duration of this video. So what is this board game book? Well. As the editor puts it, it's an introduction into the world of board gaming, as well as it's um, a platform for players which are new to the hobby or have just started the hobby or already in the hobby, might like extend uh, their knowledge about gaming, whether or not you know they watch videos on YouTube or whether they read blogs or they actually are subscribed to one of the very limited uh, board gaming magazines that are out there. So this book was a Kickstarter and I'm not going to use a script, I'm actually going to use the actual book as a script itself because the first page starts with the Kickstarter backers. So a thank you to all of them for, for making this book a possible reality. Next up, we have a forward from the most wonderful person in the world who I have so much to thank, and that's Mr. Ian Livingstone, the creator, or half of the creative force of the Games Workshop and half of the creative force of the Fantasy Flight, not Fantasy Flight, Fighting Fantasy Book series. There you go, see what I did? It's my nose, scrambled the words up, but I knew what I was talking about. You know, that first book that I read, Forest of Doom, when I was about 14, and all the books that I read before it had pictures in, and this had pictures in as well, actually. Hmm. But yes, the wonderful Ian Livingstone has uh, graced us with a forward. Um, and I'm a little bit disappointed with the forward because normally the forward is like an introduction. It's like this professional um, author is saying some nice things about the author of this book, and there's nothing, it's just Ian spilling out his life and games and how his life and games have intermingled with each other and how he got to where he is today and how much important games are. You know, I've read all of this before, no offense to Ian, but I, I got the impression that Ian was just asked right forward knowing nothing about what the book was about or anything about the author. So the main author, Owen Duffy, has a team of other authors working with him on this book. And I'll just go into a bit more about their work a bit later on, but I'll talk about the breakdown of the book. The book is broken down into chapters and they are baby steps into the gaming world. They start uh, the book with uh, an introduction about the board gaming history. Not that deep, it doesn't go very, very much into the past about the Egyptian first board games that they found there, whatever. But it talks a bit about, 
you know, how the hobby has in the past 20, 30 years has just boomed and rocketed. And it's quite interesting if you've not heard the story before. Then it goes into a chapter about games that you've probably been introduced to if you have just started in the hobby. So it talks about Carcassonne and Catan and, and there was actually a, a surprising one. There was a, a one, uh, Wordsy from um, Guildhova, who I've met on many times and you know, that as like a gateway game, which people have probably played, yeah, yeah, probably why not? And you know, tip my hat, congratulations. So it's not all games which come out like in 1990 or games before that, but you know, the closer to the 2000s. And, I, you know, the, the selection that they've put in there is pretty good. The book then goes into chapters, starting with the family and casual party games, then moving to lighter strategies before going to medium strategies, complex strategies, storytelling games, role-playing games, miniature tabletop games, as well as uh, board game apps. So it covers a, a big majority of what we play, what's in this room as well. Um, and it gives lots of good titles as well. There's lots of different titles from Gloomhaven to simple little things. Let's pull up like Word Slam, Azul, which is very popular. And they're all kind of brand-ish new games. A lot of them are titles which came out in 2018. There's some a bit older, but uh, there is what, 146 different games that they talk about. And let's talk about the authors themselves. They all seem to write in a, I've forgotten the word already, but kind of like it's it's a very well conglomerated kind of monotone style. You can't tell which author has written which article for which game, which is nice because it gives you this nice like one tone piece and it's not just people, you know, one, piece of writing outstanding another and that works really well now the writing of the games um, I've read I haven't read the whole book that's a lot of reading for me and I'm not a big reader myself as I said not very wordsy at all there you go Gilhover promoting your game again um, but um, I've read a majority of the, the sections of some of the games that I know some of the games that I don't know some of the games that I love and could pull apart and put back together. And so I have a general feel about how their writing style is. And they've basically done a kind of like a light wash of each of the games. Now, this works really well with the family and the light strategy games because you can cover pr pretty much all the rules in a light wash. They give a little bit of history about the game um, or they might just like introduce the theme as the history of the game before going through the rules and then giving you some impressions of what kind of sensations you're going to feel playing this game as a player. Now as I said it works really well with the light games but when it gets to the medium weight and the heavier games there are liberties taken, things that are left out um, and you know, I feel that's a shame. I mean, some of the bigger games like Twilight Imperium and Gloomhaven, they have double the amount of words that most of the other games have. Um, so they kind of do justify that. But there were games that I read and I know are quite intricate, which they just touched on about four or five points about the game when there's about 20 points in the game, which are interesting or not that interesting. Um, and that, that's a shame because, it, as I said, it's just a light brushing of the game. And sometimes it, what you think is good in the game might not be something interesting for someone else, but something that you didn't think was interesting in the game might be interesting to someone else. And so, you know, as a critic myself, I like to cover all the, the possible points of a game, whereas in here they cover just a few. And as I said, that, that's mainly for the bigger ones, but the small ones, no problem everything is covered now going back to this word critic which these guys and girls are in who have written this book there's not a lot of criticism in the in the here um which kind of like disappointed me at first because i felt that there should be and i mean the the harshest criticism that you're going to get from this book is uh this game plays better with four players than it does with two 
and that's it. But the intention of the book is not to scare gamers away or people away from coming into this hobby by, you know, being nasty and, and, and frightening them about games which, oh yeah, this is game is costs a lot of money and it's got these really cool miniatures, but the mechanics are crap. That's not what the, the attention of the book is. This, this is just to enlighten people and get them to, you know, make their own way and learn uh, the, the path of what's a good game for them and what's not a good game for them. And so I, I can't really pull it apart from that. But I feel that the, the, the authors, the critics themselves, are kind of wasting them. They're probably biting their lip to say more and more about these games that they've played. And it's, it's a shame that, in a way, that this is not like a monthly edition where the, the articles are a lot more bigger and a lot more convoluted with this works well and that doesn't work well and this is interesting and the way that this is... You know, I would like to see more works and I'll probably, after this video, when i got some time, I'll just look up these authors and uh, see what other works they've done and, you know, it, it's interesting. It, again, I'm learning from these guys. I'm trying to be as good as they are. These are wordsmiths uh, and their words are very poetic and they do poetic justice to the games that they're talking about um, and and that in itself sells the games but to me that doesn't sell the game because I want more but in a way I am getting more because most of the games that they cover in this book they have little interviews with the actual designer and so you get a kind of like behind the scenes look at their creative process for that game uh, why they did it and or if you know some, Every, every designer is slightly different. Some of them have started off their careers when they were kids, designing, cutting out games as kids. Some of them have just fallen into it because they thought this idea might work good and they've used it in some, um, some their, their current job and it's been transformed into a board game. That is all interesting. These interviews are kind of a bit short, but I've got like one of these curious minds and I want to know more and more. You know, it's, it's like, they're, they're like, oh yeah, you, yeah, but they also designed this game as well. And it's like, I want to find out how they designed that and why did, how did they come up with that idea? And But uh, yeah, they are all very interesting. Those are the parts of the book that I really enjoyed reading is about these designers. And again, it covers designers that are well known as well as designers who have done their first ever game ever um, so you get a nice kind of kind of uh, overall arc of the gaming hobby I mean all the games again are not from one producer they're publisher they're not all from one designer this is not Bruno Cathala's greatest hits with 146 games from Bruno Cathala uh, no this is a, a very very nicely rounded uh, vision of the hobby as it stands currently and currently what's very popular at the moment are app versions of board games and they're covered in here as well which is again they don't talk about the materialism of the game or the music that was put into it or the way that it's simply easy to manipulate or play it's easy to play it then they just talk about the game as the game um, but hey ho, they're not here to critic. They're not here to say that the, the, the miniatures in Warhammer 40k are not that good because the spools don't cut off properly with lip seal. I don't know. But um, again, that's not the objectivity of the book. It's to promote and open the eyes of non gamers and new gamers. But I don't think that it does anything for people like myself or you know gamers that have been gaming for years because you, you probably research your games way in advance before buying them and you don't really need a book like this and I'll finish on the last thing the cover now the cover of the book itself kind of has me lost because if you're new to the hobby you're not gonna know what with these yeah, these are board game components on here. And I took me a while to figure out what some of them were because they're all just like collaged together. And it's, it, I don't know, it just, that's one of the disconnects that I have. The cover of the book 
doesn't really convey the, the spirit of the book. The spirit of the book is to introduce people into board gaming, or as I said, or as Owen has said, this is to, you know, those people that are into board gaming to encourage them to look at other things. And I don't think anyone who's new to the hobby is going to look at that and go, oh, that's a book about board gaming, unless they they read what it says. But they're not going to see that from the imagery itself, which is a shame. And I think it's missing its target audience in that way. Um, again, the artwork inside the books, they've taken pictures of the games. Some of them are really good. Some of them, like, uh, you know, this game looks great when it's sprawled out. Uh, but they've done just close-ups of components. And it's like... And to wrap up, the game comes with a, a glossary of gaming terms, words that probably we know intimately, but other people don't know, like what card drafting is, or what an abstract game is, or what Euro game is. So that's really nice. And that just reminded me that this is not technically aimed at myself, but it, as I said, people new to the hobby. So I suppose I better score this. A bit hard to do because it's not a board game as such. But hey ho, um, technically it's a solid, good book, a good read um, with lots of colourful images. It's laid out nicely. Um, it's it's you know perfect. I could give it a ten, but I'm going to give it a nine point five due to the fact that there's this disconnect with the the art on the cover and what its target audience is for myself. Um, I could also a bit off due to the fact that there's not enough critic in there it's just it's more of a catalog of board games than a book about board games and why they're good and why they're not good as for my personal score if i was to score this like a board game geek rating i'd give this seven out of ten um it is a interesting read i like the interviews they're very you know, they open the door and you see behind the curtain a bit about the industry itself. Um, I like the book. It's it's well, as I said, it's well produced, um, but it doesn't hold my interest because the critique is very, very light. And as I said, the, the, the writing is very good, um, but it's, it, uh, as a critic, I want more. I want more blood and guts. I want more meat and veg on my plate. This is just kind of like a, a slice of ham and a leaf of salad in my eyes. Um, as I said, it's, I, it's not really aimed at myself, um, but um, it's, it's, still a good, it's still a good book. It's still a good read. Uh, I will definitely keep this, and especially when my friends come around and they don't know nothing about board gaming, I'm just have this on the table next to where the coffee machine is and maybe convince them. So if my math served me right, that gives a combined score of 8.25 out of 10 for the technical and my personal score. So there you go. That is the board game book volume one. Yes, it's volume one, which means they're gonna do another volume next year, which as I said earlier, they should do a, a, a website or a magazine and produce a monthly content, but also do a book as well. But maybe do like the best of 2018 games or, or something. I don't know. Or maybe just do another one of these. But um, there you go. Hope you found this video informative and it's pointed you in the direction whether this is a book for your board game table or not. Um, if you've liked this video, give it a like. If you know someone that might be interested in this book, maybe buy it for them for their birthday present or Christmas. Uh, we'll share this video with them um, and see <laughs> if they like it. Uh, thanks very much for watching. If you want to check out everything that I've been doing and Guillaume's been doing and Arnold's been doing, you can go to boardgameseverybodyshould.com and check out all the reviews, all the board game music, all the board game podcasts that I'm involved in. And that's it. Thanks very much for watching again. I told you, the words in my head just get mixed in my nose and just... Just sit in